Is it too early to build a jank deck into one piece CCG? No, but let's talk about it. What's up captains, welcome back to the other decks. My name is Casual Dobo, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at a deck I'm calling Self-Destruct Kaido. The whole concept is to utilize some of those on KO abilities that we have in our purple and blue cards and try and utilize uh, our 10 cost board wipe Kaido to blow them up. In that way, board wipe Kaido is not only affecting our opponent's strategy, but also giving us a little bit more utility because of those on KO abilities. Now the version I'm going to be showing you is a little bit more uh, on the tame side, um, but it is a lot more consistent than some of the other versions I created. Because um, I kind of went through versions like um, Sentamaru uh, Pacifista combo, or just having a deck that just had a bunch of on KO abilities. And those were cool because when they worked, they worked. But they weren't as streamlined or they felt a little clunky um, piloting them. So I think this version I'm going to show you is um, pretty good, pretty smooth. Um, and honestly, uh, is, is a good uh, starting point or jumping off point for anyone who wants to try and take this concept and then build it out even further. So this video really is for all of the rogue, janky, anti-meta deck builders uh, in the game. But if you have any ideas on how you would, you know, improve upon this deck, please let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you can, please give this a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. Hey there everyone, Future Adobo here, and I just want to let you know that I teamed up with my friend Ion, aka Void D Century, to bring you gameplay of this very deck. So, if you want to see this thing in action, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, that way you'll know when that comes out, which should be later this week. Also, we'll play game 2, which is going to be on his channel, so be sure to subscribe to that one. Alright, that'll do it for me. Now back to past me, or present me? I don't know, time's weird. But anyway, I think that's enough for the intro, so let's go ahead and just jump right into the deck profile. Alright, so like we do with all of our One Piece deck profiles, we're going to start off with the Dawn Curve. And here, this is kind of an interesting thing. Um, we do have spikes in the 1s and the 4 cost characters, and then obviously some of our bigger stuff in the 8s and 10s. While this curve might indicate that this is a kind of uh, early game deck, we're actually trying to aim for something in the middle to late game, and a lot of those sort of low cost characters are uh, barriers or speed bumps for our opponent, that way they can't just, you know, win the game outright. And also, after we do the board wipe, it allows us to play um, a couple more things um, afterwards that can help sort of rebuild our own board. And then the last thing I want to point out here is that we are working with uh, 35 counters. 10 of which are our 2k counters, so that's pretty cool. And the reason for the high amount of counters is mostly so that we can uh, live to see the middle to late game. Because as with all of our, you know, dual color leaders, we only have 4 life, and so every hit is, is very important. But anyway, I think that'll do it for a Don Curve, let's go ahead and jump into the actual deck list. Alright, and here we are at the deck list, so let's go ahead and start off with our uh, Kaido card. Our leader. So Kaido is a dual color uh, purple or blue purple uh, leader card, 5,000 power, 4 life, 4 emperors, and animal kingdom pirates. And then the effect reads uh, Dawn times 1, so attach 1 Dawn onto our leader. Uh, during your turn, once per turn, when one of your opponent's characters is KO'd, you can add 1 Dawn from your Dawn deck and set it as active. So this is a pretty cool way to ramp ourselves throughout the game. Next up, we do have four copies of Trafalgar Law. So this is just our chump blocker, uh, one cost to play, 1000 power blocker. Next up, we have two copies of Smiley. So for context, this is actually one of the big inspiration points to building the self-destruct deck because, and I'll just jump over real quick. If you look at Caesar Clown, four cost to play, 5000 power, on KO, play one smiley card from your deck, then shuffle your deck. So this gives us the extra added benefit of having another character available after our Kaido, um, you know, wipes the board. So yeah, Kaido wipes the board if we have Caesar Clown on the field, um, it'll get KO'd, then we bring a smiley from our deck, shuffle our deck, but that means at the bare minimum, we have two characters available. Now, neither of them can attack, which, you know, could be a problem depending on what you're facing, but they are available to potentially attack next turn. Now, admittingly, I came up with this idea um, before Smiley was revealed, and honestly, I wish Smiley was just a little bit better, but for a free card from, you know, the deck, 
can't really ask for more unless you're a pacifista. But Smiley is 3 cost to play, 1000 power, does have counter 1k, and then Dawn times 1, so immediately 2k, right? But Dawn times 1, on your turn, this character gains plus 1000 power for each card in your hand. So if you had 5 cards in hand, um, that would be 5 plus 1 plus 1, 7000 power for a free character. Honestly, not too bad. Keep in mind, this only happens on your turn, so on your opponent's turn, this is just a 1000 power um, character. Uh, so that could be um, problematic in, in different ways. And we only have two copies of it, mostly because we want to, you know, activate it with the Caesar Clown ability and not have it in hand or in life. Next up, we do have three copies of Perona. So one cost to play, 2000 power, counter 1k, um, but on playability. Look at the top five of your deck and then rearrange them in any order, then return them to the top or the bottom of the deck. Essentially, this is scrying, right? And the main thing we're scrying for is our board wipe Kaido. So if we don't see Kaido in that top five, then just bottom deck it. Very similarly, we do have three copies of Don Quixote do Flamingo. Uh, I chose the <laughs> weird art one for reasons because it haunts my nightmares and it should haunt yours too. Three cost to play, 4,000 power, 1k counter, but this one is a blocker. And then on play has a very similar effect to Perona. Look at the top five and then either put at the bottom or the top of your deck in any order might i add <laughs> so once again you're really looking for the kaido if you have the kaido in hand then you might be looking for some of those on ko um, characters but being able to scry our top five and then also um have a blocker makes do flamingo dofi a pretty solid card next up we do have two copies of sasaki so just three costs to play four thousand power but it's a counter 2k which is primarily why we have them in here. And then Dawn times one, one attacking, you can trash a card from your hand, add one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and rest it. So like I said, we're primarily using him for his 2K counter, but if we do need to put him on the board and um, attack, he does have some good ramp ability, which is especially useful after the board wipe. So Sasaki has some extra utility in that case, but he's mostly there for the counter. Next up, we do have two copies of Miss Doublefinger, AKA Zala. Um, so three costs to play, 4,000 power, so pretty close to being a natural attacker, just needs one extra dawn. Um, counter, 1k, but on KO, draw a card. So this is cool because uh, she is very close to being a natural attacker, so if we just attach one dawn, um, we can swing into our opponent's leader. And then if our opponent gets tired of uh, Miss Doublefinger enough, they might KO her, and then we just get a free draw. But the strategy that we're really going for is having Miss Doublefinger out there not our opponent not really like paying attention to her and then we do the board wipe kaido and then we get some draw cards out of it then we slap down the board wipe kaido and then we get a free draw because we will ko her as well now the other thing i was thinking about was um putting in uh hold'em uh, who says on ko um put a dawn card from your deck onto the cost area rested so a little bit of extra ramp but i think i like the ability to have more cards in hand that way we can protect ourselves a lot more. But let me know which on KO character you would replace uh, for her if you wanted to swap her out. All right, next up we do have three copies of Caesar Clown. So we kind of talked about him already. Four costs to play, 5,000 power, so a natural attacker, 1K counter, which is pretty awesome. And then on KO, play a smiley from our deck, then shuffle our deck. So besides getting the extra character onto the field, um, it does allow us to shuffle which is pretty important because we have obviously that Perona and that Dofi that is putting cards potentially to the bottom of our deck, cards that we might want later in the game. So if we're able to shuffle our deck, we have potential for those to um, rise back up to the top or at least become a, a higher percentage of us seeing it again. Next up, we do have four copies of Boa Hancock. So four cost to play, 5,000 power, counter 1K. So has the Trinity that we're looking for. Um, blocker which is pretty awesome but what makes boa hancock even more awesome is dawn times one when attacking or when blocking draw one card if there are five or less cards in your hand so boa gives us a little bit of extra draw power um, and the flexibility to have that when blocking or when attacking is pretty awesome here a super solid sr from uh the one piece set Next up, we do have four copies of Dracula Mihawk. So four cost to play, 5,000 power, but 2K counter, which is primarily why we have him at 4K here, um, but also has an incredible ability. Dawn times one when attacking, 
uh, draw two cards and discard two cards. So while this isn't, you know, pure card draw, it's, you know, card cycling, um, card refreshing, right? It's a refreshing our hand so that we're trying to find the cards that we want to see, aka our board wipe, while also discarding some of the things that we don't quite need uh, right now. So yeah, of all the 2k counters, this is the one that is most likely to see the field. Or we could go to our other 2k counter of x -Drake. So five costs of play, so a little bit more expensive, but 5,000 power, natural attacker, and then a 2k counter, pretty awesome, but has a pretty interesting ability. On play, Dawn minus one, your card trashes one card from their hand. And if you've played any One Piece already, you know just how valuable having cards in hand is especially from a defensive standpoint, because it gives you a lot more options um, for, for counters, for events, right? So forcing your opponent to make a hard decision and trash one of those things, especially if they already have a low hand count, um, that could be an incredibly powerful ability. So x -Drake is pretty solid. And then rounding out the rest of our characters are our high ends. So we have two copies of Douglas Bullet. So a cost to play, 10,000 power, Activate main once per turn, Dawn, minus four. So return four cards from uh, your field uh, back to the Dawn deck, but rest up to two of your opponent's cost six or lower characters, then this character gains double attack for the turn. If you've seen any of the, um, the videos where I've talked about the film cards, you know just how much I love Douglas Bullet. He's 10,000 power, so he is a natural uh, threat to honestly one of the most powerful and probably annoying cards in the One Piece set uh, for the first set, uh, which is the uh, super rare uh, kid character card, the one that makes the rest of the board uh, impervious. <laughs> but Bullet can naturally deal with him, you know, as long as the opponent doesn't counter, right? Uh, but has 10,000 power, so very strong, and has flexibility, which as a deck builder and as a player, I love to see, because unlike Board Wipe Kaido, that ability is not an on-play ability, right? So I don't immediately lose four Dawn from it. I can choose when to utilize that Dawn for, you know, the right scenario. And then prior to that, I can just use it to swing into my opponent's characters or just save it for kid. And then when the time is right, Dawn minus four, go in for that double attack. 10K is very hard to overcome. So yeah, just great flexibility when it comes to Douglas Bullet. But the high cost of purple card we want to see most likely is our board wipe Kaido. So this is 10 cost to play, 12,000 power, so an absolute beast. Um, on play, Dawn minus six. If your leader has the Animal Kingdom Pirates trait, KO all other characters except for this one. So yeah, obviously this is really good against um, most opponents, right? The only one I'd be a little bit afraid of is a, a rush deck, right? Because they can just rush on next turn. Uh, so make sure that you have a healthy amount of life. Um, ideally when you do this and then yeah ideally the things we have on the board are our miss double finger our caesar clown that way we can have some of the extra utility that happens when they get ko'd and 12,000 power just is a, a huge threat to our opponent they essentially have to find a way to deal with it and honestly at 10 cost 12,000 power there's not a whole lot of ways to deal with it at least without having to do some weird wonky combo like um round table uh Robin, right, could do it. You'd need like three Otamas and a Jet Pistol. <laughs> so yeah, Kaido is hard to deal with. Only downside is he doesn't have Rush, so you board wipe the whole thing, but you can't attack during that turn, except for, you know, with your leader. So that does it for our character cards. Let's go into our event cards, and we are pretty event heavy here, just because we want to have that sort of survivability. So first up, we do have three copies of Desert Spada. So one cosplay, which is pretty nice. Then a counter ability. Your leader or one of your characters gains plus 2,000 power for a turn. Then you can look at the top three cards of your deck and then return them to the top or bottom of the deck in any order. So yeah, similar to Perona or Dofi, this allows us to look at the top of our cards and then choose where to put them at the top or bottom, looking for our Kaido. And then also has a pretty solid trigger ability in Draw 2 Trash 1, um, which allows us to gain one card and then cycle our hand a little bit. So pretty solid. Next up, we do have two copies of Thunder Bagua. So, Two cost of play, but it's a counter. Uh, your leader get, or character gets uh, plus 4,000 for a turn. Then if you have two or less life, add one Dawn to your, from your Dawn deck and rest it. So adds a little bit more ramp. Um, and then speaking of ramp, it's trigger ability. Add one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and set it as active, which is pretty nice. Next up, three copies of Love Love Beam. So two costs to play, uh, counter. 
your leader or one of your characters gains plus 4,000 power for the battle. And then if you have three or less characters in hand, draw one. Also for any time I said for the turn instead of for the battle uh, in, other, in the other two event cards, uh, it's supposed to be for the battle. So that's my bad. But this is cool because if you have a pretty low uh, hand size, uh, this does give you a little bit of draw ability and it's a pretty solid counter. Next up, we do have two copies of Elephant's March Shoe. So, four cost to play, so kind of on the expensive side, but KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of two or less, which is primarily aiming at those low cost blockers that many people like to play. And then add one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and set it as active. So it's single target removal plus ramp, so pretty solid. And then its trigger ability is activate this card's main effect. And then last but not least, we do have three copies of Sables, so four costs of play. Main ability, return one of your opponent's characters with a cost of seven or less to their hand. And then trigger, activate the main ability. So this is cool to remove any sort of problematic cards, um, especially um, things like the, the blocker kit from the starter deck, right? And yeah, while it doesn't take care of like the most problematic cards in the meta, um, this will take care of a majority of the cards. So yeah, Sables is just overall very good. And that is my self-destruct Kaido deck. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comments. So for sure, this is not gonna be the final iteration of this, but like I said, I think it's a good starting off point for uh, myself as well as for any of you who are interested in making some, some weird decks with me. And if you build those decks, I would love to see them. I do have a Twitter um, at the other decks, so if you wanna go follow that and then tweet your deck lists at me, I would love to see what you come up with. Or if you want, just post it uh, down below in the comments. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please consider giving it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. This allows me to know what y'all are interested in. But anyway, I think that'll do it for me. So captains, remember, build what you like, play what you love. And I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good one.